Welcome to Snack Food for the Soul. And as you can see, our subject today is all about favor. I don't know about you, but every time I hear that word favor, see, I wish you could see it right now. I've got goose pimples on my arms. There are folks who have made Jesus Lord and Savior of their life who know what favor is, but there are some people who have not even thought about submitting to allow Jesus to be Lord of their life. But as soon as they hear the word favor, all of a sudden, woo, they, you got their attention. They, they're like, where's favor? 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 Look, look it up. I'm favor? Favor? Oh, there's favor. I'm going to chase favor. They will chase the word favor before they chase the name of Jesus. There's something about the name favor. We just, it smells good. It feels good. It's, it's an aromatic appeal to your olfactory senses. It just, it just engraces itself. And, and favor like truth, when it walks in the room, it's majestic, it's empirical, it's empirical, it's it's unimpeachable, it's sovereign. Favor is just absolute. And 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 one thing I love about favor is that you don't have to explain it, and sometimes it's not fair. I think back to a song that I love by my, my favorite vocalist, uh, Billie Holiday, the late, great Lady Day. She had a song called um, God Bless the Child. And the words are, I ain't going to sing it, so don't panic, okay? The words are, um, them that's got shall have, them that's not shall lose. So the Bible says, and today is still news. Mama may have, Papa may have, but God bless the child who's got their own. And those words are so awesome because when you've got your own, and you've made it, it's happened. God's favor has been on your life and you've got your own thing. You ain't got to say that I got here because so-and-so gave it to me. I got here because of, of, of my mama. I ain't get here because of my daddy. I ain't get here because I got here because I did it. But when you know God and you know the, the Savior, the Messiah, the King of the universe, the architect of salvation, you know you didn't get there on your own. Your own. He, you got there because he paved the way. And that's the beautiful thing about favor is that God will grant you the favor to get things done. Huh. And when you get it done, he's not impressed with the fact of how you got it done because he prepared the way. And that's the thing with so many people get so caught up in the trappings of life, what I drive, where I live, what I wear, you know, I'm bling blinged out. God is not impressed with what you drive. God is not impressed with the initials and alphabet soup behind your last name. God is impressed with your character, with the pH balance, because favor brings about acclaim and fame, right? But favor and acclaim can be toxic to you if you don't have the character by which to neutralize the toxicity of that fame. And you ever look at people who rise to the top, celebrities, athletes, politicians, name it. You may look at them and say, man, they just got it. And I wish I had that. Give it time. If they don't have the character, right, that is steadfast and immovable and always abounding in the word of God that neutralizes and stabilizes them, man's acclaim, all that air that man blows up in their head will be toxic to them. And man's soul, his character, cannot, it's, there's no sustainability there. They cannot sustain or maintain. And what's going to happen like a balloon, what goes up must come down. Spinning. Okay, okay I'm not going to go there. Round. Okay, so I digress. So um, I'm dating myself there, right? So where I'm going with this is watch those people who seemingly have favor and success. God is not impressed with what they achieve, with what he gives them the passport to get there with. He's impressed with how they use it. It's like having, it's like the, the, the parable of the talents, right? God gave a few servants talents and they invested and one buried it. Most people just bury it into their carnality and they do not prosper the very seed gift that God has given them. When comes harvest time, when it's time to really work, it's harvest time. You don't just sit back and you got to harvest it because then what's going to happen is the insects, the bugs and, 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 and the ripeness of whatever it is you want. You're working against time in harvest. So what happens when a harvest time comes, you get fat in yourself and in your own acclaim and you can't really work to bring God the first fruits. And that's why so many people fall and plummet to their demise socially intellectually, emotionally, and yes, finally, spiritually. And so what I say this about favor is God chooses to whom he gives favor. 
God chooses whom he wants to bless and whom he wants to curse. The Bible says his thoughts are above our ways, his, way, his, thoughts are about, his thoughts are above our thoughts and his ways are above our ways. And so I'm going to take you to, to, to um, uh, uh, first uh, uh, Samuel. We talk about uh, uh, King David. And, and, and Saul was the king, so to speak, quasi-king, and he disobeyed God. And God said to Samuel, I reject him. I want you to go to Jesse, and one of his sons is going to be my chosen king. Jesse had eight sons, and you know the story. He presented all of them. He brought them all before uh, um, um, Samuel. And God had told Samuel to fill this flask with oil, uh, olive oil. And, and when you pour, when you turn the flask upside down, if it flows, that's the chosen one. And so he brought seven of them. They were tall, they were handsome, they were smart, they were men of town. And on paper, they were well qualified for the role. And here comes, uh, and, and, and so then, we, I'm getting ahead of myself now. So then Samuel is told by Jesse, well, that's it. Well, there's a, this really nominal son that I have. And, 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 and Samuel is like, well, look, we ain't leaving here until I see them all, right? So he summons uh, David from the back fields, and he's a, he's a shepherd. He smells of dung, but he's handsome. He's, uh, he's, a, he's, he's intellectually curious, uh, which makes him a genius. He's a great songwriter. He's a dancer. He's, he writes music for the Lord. He writes God love songs. Huh? He writes God love songs. That's amazing that when you have God's favor in your life, while all of this is going on, the main line, the main event of the show, he's watching you in the background, wash dishes, uh, like, like a gaffer. He's watching you lay cable. You know, like you've ever been in a, in, involved with production, you know, they got road managers. They're in charge of everything that goes on behind the scenes, right? And, 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 and they're, 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 he's watching the celebrity and the star, the main line, but he's watching the heart and the faithfulness of the person who's gathering the cable and laying the tape and, and cleaning the equipment and packing everything up to the best of their ability. So while all of this is going on over here, he's listening to the love songs that David is writing and singing for him. He's watching David dance out there. He's watching how David love on sheep. That's a pastor's heart. That's someone I can trust to love on my people and bring them to where I need them. You get my point. So understand that God's favor on your life has everything to do with your character. He has everything to do with what you secretly do for him, not the things you post on Facebook. Oh, look at me. Look what I've done. Oh, look what I've I'm done. Look at who I am and, and look at who I know. And uh, God is not concerned about that because he paved the way for that to happen anyway. God is concerned with the way he's paved something, but you do it secretly. He's not concerned about the fact that you, 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 you broadcasted that, oh, look, I fed 300 people. God is more concerned with the person that couldn't afford $30, but he or she gave it to someone at a gas station to fill up their tank, and no one knew about it. You may have things in your life that you don't share with anyone. Their secret hurts secret pains, things that bring you joy that you only share with God because you know the fact that you only share it with Him brings Him joy. There are things that you are still struggling with, things you're still addicted to, but you try your level best to overcome this thing even if it brings you physical discomfort and pain because you know it displeases your God. I'm here to let you know God honors that attempt more than somebody that can drop 50 G's on an event or on an initiative like five cents would mean to you. That's favor because you are postured for appreciation. You are stock value that is going to soar through the ceiling because as they are over there, and getting all the attention, pop culture, exclusivity, all the VIP treatment. You're over here on the backside where nobody sees, nobody even wants to be there. Nobody can stand the smell of your life. They don't even like the way you look because you ain't that good looking, you ain't that smart, you ain't got great credit, you ain't got a job, you ain't driving nothing special. You only make this amount of money, you only wear this kind of clothes and, and no, one, no one pays any attention to you but Somebody sees something about that guy, that girl over there. And when he or she walks into the room, there's something 
that arrests their emotions. The fragrance that God has placed on you, the incense that your life creates, the, 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 the aromatic appeal that ascends the atmosphere to the very nostrils of God grabs them and God's tap, God taps them on the shoulder as they're over here and says, look over there. And all of a sudden, goose pimples. In the case of Elizabeth and Mary, Elizabeth, the mother of John the Baptist, the precursor to Christ, was pregnant. And she comes into the presence of Mary and finds out that Mary's pregnant. And as soon as she hears this, John the Baptist, in her womb leapt and she and he were filled with the Holy Spirit he had the Holy Spirit before Jesus ceremoniously received the Holy Spirit and it's interesting how God can take things out of order just because for not necessarily the greater good but the good of what's right and if you have favor on your life and you're that person on the backside of the mountain, you know what I'm talking about. There are people that you work for, work with, that on paper, they are, they're qualified. They've got the schooling, they've got the, the pedigree, but God is not so concerned with them because they're about to abdicate their royal priesthood. And you're about to inherit something that you did not earn before man. You earned it before God. And because you've earned it before God, it's going to last. And it's going to mesmerize people. Because as they watch, like Lucifer, the star fall from heaven when he was kicked out of heaven with a third of the angels, and they became demons. When the world is watching that person fall to their demise, God is raising you up over here. And when you get to where you're supposed to be, all people can say is, dang! <laughs> but you would have already been there because you've amassed kingship. You, my sister, the majestic queen that you are, the way you walk, the way you think, because royalty is not all about one's genetic predisposition and one's pedigree. Royalty is about the way you think. Royalty is about the way you speak. Royalty is about what you intend and what you intend is God's right way because you have a high degree of integrity. It's that which you do that no one is there to see you do, but you do it as though you're being observed by a million people when you're really only playing to an audience of one and that is the one of all creation the master and the creator of the universe, when you play only to God and you live for God, you speak for God, you cry for God, you, life for, you, 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 you laugh for God, you do everything for him, that's when you earn his favor. And that's when he'll pull you out of circumstances and situations that people wonder, how did you even get into that, let alone get out of that, when most people would have died in that. That's favor. And favor doesn't always mean that you have a 10 or seven or eight figure bank account. Favor can mean your name is priceless. Proverbs talks about a good name is worth more than rubies. I work hard for my name because I work hard to please my God. I posted something on Facebook that your lonely time with God will make your favor go viral with man. Stop bragging about yourself. Stop talking about you. Stop being your PR agent. Everybody can see that those who spend the most time talking about them are trying their very most to build up them. Everybody sees it. Chill on that for a minute. Start bragging on your God, to your God. Be like David. Sing him a love song. 
cry out to him and tell him, Lord, I love you, I praise you, I glorify, I exalt you. And some people will say, why does it take all of that? Well, when you go watch a football game, how excited do you get? When you watch a basketball game, how crazy do you get? Oh, but when it comes down to God now, oh, it doesn't take all of that. You a fool. <laughs> That's all I can say is you've been hoodwinked and bamboozled. You have been anesthetized, inebriated by the very toxic fumes you've been breathing in from this world system called a Babylon spirit, my friend. And some people, oh, that's too much. Well, why is it that when you go all out for what you want to go all out for, it's just fine. But when we go all out for a God that you can't see and don't feel touched by, then we're crazy. Uh, that's a soapbox I need not get on because snack food is not to offend you, but it's about to incite you to truth. So sing God a love song. Tell him how wonderful he is, how much you love him, how good he smells, how, how you're so comforted, how he's exquisite at every single thing that he does. He's so good at waking you up every morning. He's so wonderful about the way he loves you. You love the way you, he forgives you. You love the way he comforts you. you. You love the way he heals you. You love the way he feeds you, shelters you, comforts you, provides for you, protects you, and, and restores you. When you start talking to him, the words will start to flow. You understand? And, 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 and it's like water. Once you open up the faucet and and as you start to praise and worship him with that fervor, you become the child who's got his own. What starts to happen is God begins to brag on you. He starts to set you up for that promotion because, oh, the character, I see the seed germinating. huh? I see that promise I placed in them. Look at the sprout. Look at the root system that's growing. They're learning to be steadfast and immovable. They are developing some character and integrity because you become so convicted by just him. Hmm? My, uh, we, my wife and I had dinner with a power couple not too long ago. And the woman said to her, I said to my wife, you know, how do you handle this, the fact that your, your husband is around all these beautiful women? And, and uh, my ministry is two women. I'm around a lot of women. This is what it is, right? So, uh, uh, and, 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 and um, he, she said, yeah, how do you handle that? It doesn't bother you and, and so forth. And my wife says, oh, yeah, it does. It does. I'm a normal person. You cut me, I bleed. But here's the thing. I trust my husband. He's an honest man, and, and, and I trust him. But more importantly, I trust his walk with God. Woo, man. <laughs> that thing, I, I don't know if I could finish eating when I was well, eating my meal. That thing shut me down, man. Because here it is, the person I'm in covenant with is saying publicly before man and before her God and before me that, yeah, I trust you and I love you, but I honor your walk with God because I know you're accountable to him first. That thing shut me up, man, because that's how I live. I don't live for my wife. I don't live for my children. I don't live for you. I don't live for anything other than him. He's for whom I live and for whom I die. He's what means every absolute thing for me. That if the sun refuses to rise in the morning, if it didn't set one night, I don't look to man. I don't look to science. I don't turn on look CNN or Fox or CNBC or MSNBC. I turn and say, Lord, what are you up to? But you know what? Because my favor is such with him, he'll cue me in and let me know what's going to go down. And if he doesn't exactly check with me because he doesn't need to check with me, I'll sense something. I'll smell something in the air because his residue is on me. So therefore, because I spend so much time around him, everything around me, he reflects him and so understand this when I say that residue when you're in a room with people and who smoke a cigar you're gonna come out smelling like a cigar you will come out smelling like smoke so that residue that favor of God is on you so on the other side let's talk about the kingdom of darkness for a second the enemy will also sense God's greatness on you because unlike us, he has been in God's presence. He looked God eye to eye. He was created by God. He was God's most crowning achievement. Lucifer was. And, and so he was so beautiful and so perfect, but what happened, he got anesthetized and inebriated in and of himself because God, he was an archangel. Like unlike angels, archangels have choice like you and I. He chose ah, to try and topple God. Foolish man, like Nimrod did. And he got kicked out, right? So he knows when you spend time with God and that very favor that's on your life. Oh, see, that's a drug interaction right there. That very favor in your life 
causes un discomfort with him. And so when you walk in a room and, and, and God's favor is on you and people are challenged and enticed and, 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 and inebriated by the very peace of God on you, uh, people like the enemy, they try to throw roadblocks because they know the very presence and peace of God. And what happens is they can't tell the difference between you or God because God, you are in the image of God. So when they see you walk, when he sees you walk in a room and senses God's presence on you, all he can do is he feels the authority. He smells the aroma, the incense of, 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 of purity and the sovereign power, the majestic rule of our God, the omnisapience of our God, the absolute of himself God, the Alpha and Omega God, the first and the last God, the healer, the rebuke of the devourer God, the lover of the breach God. And because of that, he gets intimidated and starts to throw roadblocks your way and use other people who don't get your God and don't get your anointing. And because he'll use those other people, they become like manifestations or permutations of his imps, demons. And so they will be used of him because they don't spend time with God. So it's easy for them to be used of the enemy and they'll throw roadblocks in front of you. And that person could be your wife, your husband, or your children. Now, it doesn't mean that because you're automatically, and let me rephrase that, just because you get used of the enemy means that you're one of his. You can get used of his and not even being known you're being used of his, right? And so that is thrown at your path as the anointed and the favor full of God to throw you off your game. And he will use your children who may have promise on their life and that promise infuriates the enemy, causes him a migraine headache, and he will use the very favor of your fruit, your seed, uh, the seed of your loins, your very legacy to confound you, to throw them off their quest for purpose and cause you to abdicate your own royal priesthood. He will use favor against you, so the other side of favor is toxicity if you do not have time spent and time well spent with the Lord. So if you are fully manifested and saturated in the very word and the presence and the peace of God, <sighs> you also smell the enemy. You'll see his footprints on the crime scene. You'll see his fingerprints. You'll see the crime scene tape before you even come on the scene. You'll know, ah, uh, mm-hmm. When you are spending your quiet time with the Lord in the morning, the Lord will tell you he's gonna try you today. And because he's gonna try you today, you need to be even more fortified with the gospel. Have the full armor of God, right? The helmet of salvation. Have your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel. Oh, but there are, there are kinks in the armor. And there are different places where the enemy can seep in. And he seeps in through our mind. He seeps in through our loved ones. And so understand there's a, there's a cost for favor. It costs you, beloved. And part of that cost, part of your rent for inhabiting the land of favor is you've got to spend that time with him and glorify him. You've got to serve him and use all that you've given him, all that he's given you to serve his people. God, it is a saying I've seen that God gave you one more day, not because you needed it, because someone will need you. That's the kind of God we serve. If you're not blessing and serving people, if he's placed people in your life that have purpose and a call and passion, you've got money, sow some seed in their life. Be an encouragement to them. Don't just hold on to what you've got like you're going to take it with you to heaven. <laughs> One thing you can't do in heaven is invest money and nothing you can do is witness to people. Ah, it's too late because we're all rich then. So, so understand, favor is a 360 degree panoramic study. It's not something that you wake up with and it's a hormonal surge in the body of an adolescent. Favor is something that's calculating, it's strategically, genetically predisposed for excellence and it does not fall to the ground. Like God's word, it will not return unto him void. Even if someone who had God's favor and abdicated, it will fall to someone else. Many people walking in the body of Christ, many people in corporate America, who you thought was so powerful and so anointed have already been fired. You just have not seen the result. You have not seen them fall to their demise. You're next for a blessing, beloved. Now you truly understand how favor works. And you understand how David earned his favor. 
But wait a minute, brother. You can't earn favor. God just gives it to you. Think again. You got to keep it. You can't lose it. The gifts and callings of Christ are without repentance. I understand that. There are lots of people who have the very calling of God to touch, heal, and deliver people and will crack hell wide open. God will use that favor to his glory until your last breath before your eyes open up in hell. So I hope I broke it down to you in a way and fashion befitting of my master and he's proud because he's certainly proud of you. And this thing called favor is an amazing prospect. And if you don't think you have it, be around people who do because you'll smell like it, you'll look like it. And after a while, the world won't be able to tell the favor from that person from the promise that's on your life. My prayer for you this week is, Father God, I thank you for my brother. I thank you for my sister. I thank you for the time that you allot me each week to speak into their lives. I thank you for that privilege, Lord God. And for my brother and my sister, I speak and I decree and declare upon you the very favor of God, that it saturates you from the crown of the head to your sole of your feet, that when you walk, you leave footprints dripping in the oil, the saturation of the favor on your life. I speak favor unto your children. I speak favor unto your household. I speak favor unto your finances. Most importantly, I speak favor unto your obedience, your commitment to God. Follow the Holy Spirit and seek him while he may be found. Father God, keep my brother and my sister with a hedge of protection and a bloodline each and every day of their life in Jesus' mighty name. Beloved, as I open my eyes and I look at you, please know God loves you more than the circumstances around you. Have an indescribably blessed week.